What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of CSN News. Hope you're having a great day so far. All of today's stories will be time marked down below for your convenience. And first off, I do want to thank all of you for the great support on my last three videos. All those videos breaking 700 likes and I cannot thank you all enough for that. In, in response to that, for a little reward, I guess all I can really give you guys is more videos. Today will be a double upload day and also a video tomorrow for you guys. There is so much information and news on the scene right now and I want to share it with all of you as fast as possible. So for today's first video, we have some amazing stories. The first of which is the possibility of keychains coming to CSGO sometime soon in the future. We actually had the original video. I'll link it down below for all of you. This guy found this text file somewhere in the CSGO database a long time ago, actually late last week, guys, about keychains possibly coming to CSGO. And we also had NIP tweet out this. People kind of going berratic right now as the discussion does start if keychains will come to CSGO. And I'll give you guys my two cents as to why I think it actually could be a possibility and why I'm going to hate this update. Now, first of which, I don't, when I say keychain, I don't mean anything coming out of your pockets. I mean an actual weapon attachment. Of course, the first reason I think this could actually come to the game is because Valve is running out of things to actually sell us. Now, of course, we have skins for weapons and skins for knives coming out. That's the one thing you really can see all the time in the game. And then after that, it came out with gloves. Gloves, the other thing, your hands, the only thing you can see in game. Now, going to a game of CSGO, what else do you see? You see your gun, you see your hands, that is it. Valve is running dry on ideas. And of course, a keychain attachment to your weapon would make sense because you can see it the entire time and it would look kind of cool to the person who likes to spend money for a cosmetic like that. Now, the second reason why I think this could come out to CSGO, unfortunately, is because other esports, other video games have already done this kind of thing in the past. We had Team Fortress 2 doing several things like this. Most notoriously, we have Call of Duty. I think it was actually Infinite Warfare and another mod of that actually had this as well where they came out with accessories like this in their game and they were still called gun attached strictly cosmetic gun attachments to your weapons guys and they did that as well alongside that we also have rainbow siege 6 they did the same exact thing so for valve to do this it makes perfectly good sense for them business wise to bring in some pointless money I myself if this actually comes out in the game if keychains actually become a thing after gloves that was almost the ultimate straw there I still think gloves are kind of an iffy update I just kind of got over the wall of thinking they were cool if keychains come out though I seriously might reconsider like just not selling all my skins and never buying a single skin again because this is almost the ultimate form of sellout. Now, obviously, Valve cases are probably being down and down in numbers because people are realizing, hey, by the way, if you open Valve cases, 95% of the time you're going to actually lose money. So now they're going to try and sell out in different modes here, guys. Of course, this is 100% spe speculation. We've had things in the data files like the MP7 silence. We've also had different knives in the data files as well. This could just be an idea they put in their database a long time ago that can never come out. But if it does come out, expect some backlash. What do you guys think about this? Would you guys enjoy this update? I personally, as of right now, I would definitely not, but they could make it look cool. We've had items, and if you guys zoom in on the actual data, data file itself, you guys can see like we have a a sugar skull, a banana, a plasma ball, a grenade, an AK. So it would look kind of cool. It looks very similar to the trinket on screen as well. I think that's actually in a Call of Duty video. So very, very kind of close to the other ideas other video games have already done, and it does make sense. But I would be in uproar if this actually comes out anytime soon. Now, bouncing off that, another story we talked about a while ago was actually Skins Jar. Just a quick uh, introduction here, guys. Not a paid promotion at all. Skins Jar, unfortunately enough, had their final statement, and it does seem they had 90 bots banned by Steam. Now, if you guys don't know, Skins Jar actually has a, a separate game gambling site connected to those bots called Case Jar, and no one really knows the direct connection, but that actually could be the reason why these bots were banned. And unfortunate news for these guys, as they actually announced, if you go on their bots, guys, I think upper management told me it was just around over $400,000 in skins, which... Holy ouch, that must hurt. And by the way, if you guys go to their website, if any of you guys had a balance on that website, they gave you options on how to withdraw your balance and how to get your balance back. So they're not trying to screw you guys over. You will get your money back, hopefully in the long term, but Skins Jar has lost almost half a million dollars. And then some more unfortunate news, we had a commentator and an actual caster, Blue. He was kind of uh, laid off by ESL. He actually had this statement to say after ESL had their own post as well. I'll show you guys in a second here. And he has been laid off, at least for the part time. He will be working with them in the future, but it seems basically to summarize it all up, guys, ESL could not afford him as a full-time employee. Now, why I bring this up, kind of a sad story. I feel bad for the guy. Obviously, him and the Don had kind of a budding heads. If you guys know who the Don Hossie is on Twitter, that's actually why ESL employees said this. He replied on, on Reddit with that because him and uh, him and Blue kind of went back and forth, him not being his favorite caster. I enjoyed his commentating as well, but on top of that, I can't help but think it has something to do with Days now being gone. Of course, Days and uh, now ESL unbanning these guys for their events. Of course, Days is going to choose to play the events and not cast them. So I can't help but think because they're for several 
several events, it was actually Blue and Days side by side together. I cannot help but think there was a connection there. That now that Days will not be working with ESL, they kind of cut Blue off as well. Now he still will have projects in the future, so I'll link his tweet down below for all of you guys who have any interest in a great commentator there, but kind of some sad news. And very briefly, a very huge thank you to all of you guys who have used my CSGO swap link down below. Your support keeps me running these videos very, very smoothly, and that's why I've been uploading so many videos this week. Thanks to all of you guys' support. We actually broke 600 users on that link down below, so thank you very much, guys, to all of you who have who've chosen to actually support me. Now, on top of that, we actually have our second factory new souvenir Dragon Lore has been unboxed by this guy on screen. He probably doesn't want me showing his picture, so I'll, I'll take that off the screen really quick, guys, for all of you, but that's actually one of the easiest ways you can make fifteen to $20,000, and we now have two PGL factory new souvenir Dragon Lores out there at this point in time. There could be a third or a fourth that I do not know about, but that was kind of cool to see. Another one of those has been unboxed. He went from about $35 to around $15,000. Not a bad investment there as well. Now, on top, what we thought was very likely did actually happen. We had North choose to actually sign Valde and replace Magis on that lineup. They did not choose their North Academy member. They actually chose Valde from Heroic to replace Magis Boy. Now, I'm still confused on this story because Magis Boy on his Instagram, he clearly said he was taking a short vacation and then going back to playing CSGO. So unless he has another team on his actual list of teams to play for, I'm not sure what's going on here, guys, but it seems very, very part-time that Magis Boy will be on that bench. He should be back in no time because he was certainly one of their better players. And very last in today's episode of CSGO News, and please stay tuned, guys. In about five hours, I'll have a second episode today with some other great stories. I do want to talk about this community question. This guy has asked this multiple times. He asked me, where is Luminosity Gaming? And it got me very excited because I forgot about this a couple weeks ago. They actually announced two new members. They replaced Desti and SHZ and actually replaced them with two former Pain Gaming teammates. That is Cello and Neckies. I, I know I pronounced those names. I butchered those names. But why I'm so excited about this lineup is because people forgot how well North America, the North American ESL Pro League went for Luminosity Gaming. As they finished, I believe it was 13-11, and, and it was right behind Optic Gaming and ESL Pro League for the North American side. So they were just one spot short of actually qualifying for the ESL Pro League finals. And that was with a pretty new squad in the Brazilian scene. Obviously, LG being the third ranked Brazilian squad. And I still have really, really high hopes for this team in the future, and especially with this next season, season six of ESL Pro League, which will be in Denmark, by the way way. So kind of, kind of cool to see that as well. But on top of that, I have really high hopes for them because they still have Showtime on screen for all of you. He's a former Tempo Storm, a former Immortal, and a former SK Gaming stand-in player and a great guy to have on that team. As well as they also have PKL and Nell on that lineup. That means a majority of this lineup for LG is also from Generation X and they were all former teammates over there. They have very high morale, very high chemistry. So please watch out for LG and Luminosity Gaming in Season 6 of ESO Pro League. I would expect nothing less than a top half finish. And then they're going to be on the borderline to actually qualify for ESL Pro League Finals if they keep it up. All right, hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSGO News. I'm going to do a yelling outro with my mom really quick, so she's going to just going to... No, no, you, I just need I need a weak whim a whimper. Show your face really quick, like right... All you got to do, do, go back up a little bit. No, go back down a little bit. Like, ah. Oh.